Okay, so if we take a look at this task number five, now this is a, um, yeah, related to Kirchhoff's mesh theorem or Kirchhoff's voltage law. Um, and we once again have a circuit. It's kind of the same circuit that we had before, just that there's not a short circuit now between these two nodes A and B, but um, yeah, an open circuit. And we have some voltages given. I will once again color them and say, okay, these are the ones that we know, which is this one here and this one over there. And once again, this one here. And we want to calculate the other voltages, <coughs> namely this one here and this one there and this one over here. And yeah, so now the question is, how do we do this? And there's an idea. Yeah, well, uh, it's a parallel circuit, so the voltage on each of those paths is still the same as Vs. Mm -hmm. So Vs would be the sum of V2 plus V4 as well as uh, the sum of V1 plus V3. Okay, so what we do now is we use, as you said and as you suggested, Kirchhoff's voltage law. And Kirchhoff's voltage law says that if we draw some kind of loop in the circuit, um, or once again, there are two ways to write it down. Uh, let's start with the first way. The first way is we draw a full loop in the circuit, a closed loop in the circuit. Then the sum of the voltages along this closed loop must be zero, um, if we take the, um, the sign into account. <laughs> so. Um, if I take a different color, maybe blue, and if we use this blue circle, this blue loop in, in the circuit, going this path here one time around the outer edge of this circuit, um, and in this direction. So then we could write down, okay, um, we, we, we start here on the top, we go along this voltage in the, in the same direction as this voltage arrow. So we have plus V2. We continue, we go along the same direction as this voltage arrow here, V4. So we also have plus. Okay, then we are here <coughs> and now we go again to the top and now we are, we are going against this um, arrow here of this voltage, so we have minus Vs, and then we came back to the top, so we have done a full loop, a full circle, and the sum of the voltages along this full loop must be zero. Okay, so this would be one way to uh, write it down. We, we take this full loops and we take them as, as we've done before. The sum of the currents at one node must be zero here, the sum of the currents along one of these loops or meshes <laughs> must, be, must be zero. And the other way to write it down um, as for the currents where we said the sum of the incoming currents must be the same as the sum of the outgoing currents is if you, if you go from one point, let's say if we go from this node to this node or on one way, so if we go from this node to this node, this way we go along the voltage Vs. If we go from this node to this node another way, maybe this one here, we go along these two voltages. And the voltage should not depend on the way. So if we go from, from the very same start to the very same end on different ways, we would always get the same voltage. So Vs should be once again the same as V2 plus V4. And yeah, if we hear from this equation, we just say, okay, plus Vs, of course we would end up as the same equation here. So it's, from a mathematical point of view, it's the same. Uh, from an electric engineering point of view, it's just two different ways of derive this equation. Okay, so this already gives us some solution because we know V2 is 2 volts, V4 is 5 volts, 
and two vo uh, okay uh, yeah I, I'm thank you and so the sum should be eight so Vs is eight volts or maybe write it down like this Vs is eight volt okay <coughs> how do we continue Exactly. So we can we could draw another of these loops here. I will use a different color. Um, so for this red loop, um, let's once again use this direction. So for the um, for the red mesh, we can say that v one plus v3 minus v source equals zero or we could yeah we could write it down the other way but we want to know v3 so we rearrange this equation and say okay it's v source minus v1 um, insert the values 8 volt minus uh, 2 volt and we end up with 6 volt And if I if I add this um, as I've done before to the circuit, maybe let's use black once again and say here um, here we have two volt, here we have six volt, and this totally makes sense that here we have eight volt for the source, and here we um, have three volt and five volt. So this also makes sense. Three and five gives us also eight. Okay, so how do we find the last missing voltage? First, I have to think uh, what path to do. So V1 and then uh, V1 plus VAB plus V4 equals uh, the source. For example, so we could we could also do it like this. Um, I have still green left as a color, so we could go this loop here and continue back to the source um, and for this green loop or mesh mm, that I will also draw into the same direction as before um, clockwise let's say then we have that uh, we want plus VAB plus V4 minus V source must be zero. So we can rearrange this equation to give us VAB, uh, which is then V source minus <coughs> V1 minus V4. So we insert all these values, uh, eight volt minus two volt minus five volt and 8 minus 7 is 1 volt so we end up with 1 volt for this voltage here would there have been a different way to calculate this there would have been plenty of different ways to calculate this so i have still some colors left um, for example this green color here so we could have also drawn a loop or yeah, draw, draw a loop and set up a Kirchhoff's voltage law for this loop here and for this loop and the Kirchhoff's voltage law would be V2 minus VAB minus V1 equals zero so from here we could have also calculated VAB <laughs> as v2 minus v1 and insert the values 3 volt minus 2 volt would be also 1 volt in this case and um, this is now probably hidden behind my camera window but we could also write down that uh, we could also use this loop here
in the same very same direction um, clockwise and say okay for this fourth loop uh, we could write that VAB plus V4 which is this one here minus V3 equals zero so VAB um, should be the same as V3 minus V4 and if we insert the values <coughs> then um, V3, what we calculated is 6 volt and V4 is 5 volt, so we also end up with 1 volt here. So, if you do it correctly, of course it fits at the end. Um, and there, there w would be, I, I don't know, if I have a color left, maybe gray, um, so we could also draw a loop like this, go this way go down here, go in a different direction of this VAB, go down here and return back to the source. And we could also write down an equation for this gray loop here. And if we do this, we once again would end up with the very same things. So, um, yeah, for these Kirchhoff's voltage laws and for these meshes, there for given circuit always much 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 more options to write down um, these laws, these Kirchhoff's voltage laws. So for the nodes you can count them. This circuit as we have done before for the Kirchhoff's current law there are four nodes and we have three independent nodes so we can write down three independent Kirchhoff's current laws to calculate the circuit. Um, and for the Kirchhoff's voltage law, or for this, for this mesh theorem, you can, you can write down almost endless possibilities for these loops. Um, as long as they are closed, you, you could also go up and down and up and down and up and down once again. Um, as <coughs> long as if, if it's a closed loop, you can always write down the Kirchhoff's voltage law. Still, at the end, if we do circuit simulation, of course, we need to have independent equations. So the question is, um, how do you find independent equations in this case? Do you know how to do it? Usually I count the number of mesh. Yeah, but how do you count the number of mesh? Because now we have already written uh, written down, so I've, I've not really counted this here, but this was already one, two, three, four, five, or um, if I can, uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, this is the fifth one. I could also write down a sixth one for this for this gray loop. <coughs> um, and we, we could think about more ways to write down loops in this circuit um, if we go, if we would go additional circuits, but at least we can write down six without problems write down six uh, meshes for the circuit usually I, so i take the sub meshes okay so this one yeah so the first so of, yeah so one idea would be we just take this one here we don't take these complicated ones we just use these basic ones so take this one here take this one here and take this one there and then we would end up with three loops in this case three independent loops and this circuit really has also um, three independent loops that or three independent current voltage uh, Kirchhoff's voltage laws that you can write down and one way that will be discussed later in the lecture is um, yeah is a way based on graph theory and unfortunately I don't have any colors left <laughs> so do I have one no, not really. Yeah, yellow. I still have yellow. But yellow is, is not so visible, but, but uh, this is okay in this case. So, one way to do it is, one way to find independent Kirchhoff's voltage laws and independent meshes is um, to draw a <laughs> connection between all the nodes, a connection between all the nodes 
without having a full circle somewhere. And so we have four nodes. And if I would draw a connection between all these nodes, then a connection between all these nodes would look like this. Now if I, I've connected all nodes, but I've not drawn a circle somewhere. Um, and so now if I close this graph via the remaining branches, so if I would close it here, I would get one mesh, I would I, I have get one independent Kirchhoff's voltage law. If I close it here, I get another one. If I close it here, I get another one. So I get three in this case, which makes sense. So here uh, we, we get three. Um, for other circuits, of course, you get different numbers. And another way to do it, mm, I think here it also yeah, maybe does not work that well, but yeah, maybe, maybe not. Um, so in general, what you can also do is you can count the number of, of, of elements, the number of branches in the circuit. And so we have four resistors, we have one source and we have one open circuit, which is in total six. And because we have six elements, we have six unknowns. <coughs> um, and if you have six unknowns and you set up a system of equations to calculate them, how many equations do you need? Six. If we, if we want to calculate six unknowns, we need six equations and these equations need to be independent of each other. So if we... Um, if we have six unknowns and if we, as we discussed before for this uh, very same circuit, if we have three Kirchhoff's current laws, then, and we need to have six equations at the end, then we would, then we would also need to have six, uh, uh, three <laughs> Kirchhoff's voltage laws to make it work at the end. So this is not really an, um, an equation here, but this circuit has six unknowns. If we set up a system of equations, we need six equations. As we discussed before for the last uh, exercise task, we have three Kirchhoff's current laws. So we also need three Kirchhoff's voltage laws. And what we just discussed before, and what Francesco just said, okay, we, we also get three here. We, can, we could write down much more, but once again, they are then dependent of each other. Um, and so for example, um, maybe, maybe last thing that we can discuss here is if we take, um, I, will, I will try to squeeze it into the last row here. Um, if we take this mesh, this mesh and this mesh, so the red one, the green one, and the purple one, then we should end up with our blue one that we had at the beginning. Because the blue one is the one that encircles the red, green, and purple. So uh, let's take this gray color once again. So if we start with the red one, which was this one here, so we take V1 plus V3 minus V source. So then we add the green one. The green one was this one here. So plus V2 minus VAB minus V1. And if we also add the purple one, the purple one was this one here, which is VAB plus V4 minus V3. And, and this f at the end, of course, should be zero because if we add this and this and this, the other side of this equation is still zero. So now if we check what happens here is, okay, we have V1 and V1, they will cancel here. We have VAB plus and minus, they will cancel here. And we have V3 plus and minus here, so they will also cancel. And what is left then 
Uh, once again, I think in the um, recording, this will be hidden behind my camera window, unfortunately, is uh, V2 <coughs> plus V4 minus V source. And this is uh, exactly what we started with here right at the beginning, the, the blue equation. Yeah, so they are really dependent of each other. If you take this and this and this, you will end up with the blue one that we started with at the beginning. And the problem here is that you cannot really count them. You can write down much more meshes um, than at first, let's say, they are visible in the circuit. Okay, further questions related to this exercise task? Um, then what we can maybe once again quickly do is Oops. Calculate this in simulate this in LT Spice. So I will draw a new schematic. Uh, I will once again move this to this side and put the uh, the original exercise task on the other side. And so now this voltage, as we discussed, this voltage is given, this voltage is given, and this voltage is given. Now I need something that fixes the voltage because we, we know these voltages and this is a voltage source. So I will once again go to component and select the voltage source. The voltage source is called voltage. Um, and this is yeah the more American symbol for the voltage source. So I will put a voltage source V1 here and V2 there and V3 over there and rename this to V4 to make it not so confusing and I will also already give them the known voltages which is 2 volt in this case and 3 volt and 5 volt and for the for the elements where we don't know um, the voltage yet and where we want to calculate it I will once again use resistors so place one resistor here, once again rotate this by uh, 270 degree and once again by 200, no, I think this one should point downwards. Okay, um, so <coughs> give them one ohm in this case and rename them to be RAB, R three and R source and um, place place some ground node somewhere and just wire everything together and as you see these soldering dots disappear if the element is properly connected and if I create a node such a node will be created or will be drawn mm -hmm. and there's our full circuit and we can once again name this as node A and this one as node B um, as long as everything works and now my camera shut down interestingly so the technology seems to be against me today i will just give the resistors as before one ohm and this was two volt three volt and five volt right yes, yes okay <laughs> so um yeah, and then we can click run, uh, just use this DC operating point once again, and this is the result that we get. Um, so I will move this to this side and have our handwritten solution here somewhere in the back. So click on run once again. Um, yeah, and now if we um, if we want to have the voltages we can just check the currents through these resistors because 
resistances are set to 1 ohm, so current and voltage should have the same value, even if the voltage is in volt and the current is in ampere. Um, so our, <coughs> our unknowns that we calculated, um, maybe I can encircle them here once again in the solution with the blue thing here, have been Vs. This is what we calculated here, 8 volts. It was V3, this is this one here, 6 volts. And we also calculated VAB, which was calculated here and there and maybe here at different uh, positions. And this was 1 volt. So 1, 6, and 8. And now we can check the current. Um, and I've not really nicely labeled them here. So this is RAB, this is R3, and this is R source. And recalculate once again. So the current through this resistor is 1 ampere corresponding to the 1 volt that we had before. The current through this resistor is 6 ampere corresponding to 6 volt, and the current through this source there is 6 ampere corresponding to the 6 volt that we have. Um, and yeah, so if we would finally um, label this remaining node here with C on the top, uh, we can also check and and calculate the, um, the voltage at these nodes and this is the voltage with respect to our ground node to the reference node so the voltage at node a is 6 volt at b it's 5 volt at c it's 8 volt and this also corresponds to what we have here this is 6 volt here along this path it's 5 volt here along this path to our to our reference node to our ground node uh, so i would add this the ground symbol also here and it's 8 volt from this node C to the ground node. <coughs> so this also nicely works and fits. Last thing that I would like to do is once again uh, use this task. Um, copy it and have another chat with ChatGPT and say, can you solve this task, please? And insert here and, and ch check what, what it will do in this case. So it's calculating something and it once again repeats the task, says here we have some given values and all the voltages are integrated across resistors, yes, and we need to use, uh, we can use Kirchhoff's voltage law, which is quite a good idea, and sets up some formula and says, okay, Vs, the voltage across the source, is V1 plus V3. If we check, or if we check here, this, this makes sense, right? This would be, would be this loop here. Um, but cannot do something with this because just the voltage V1 is given. Okay, so then to the right loop, whatever the right loop is, VAB is V2 and V4. Um, does this make sense? VAB? No, this does not make sense uh, because V2 and V4 would be the voltage across the source. And so calculates wrongly that this is 8 volts. At least it's including the units here. Um, then it says something very strange and says, okay, the voltage V3 is the same as VAB and okay, the remaining solution is then also, of course, not very useful and bullshit and rubbish. Um, yeah, once again, I've, I would, from my experience, I would have expected it to perform better um, because this is, 
yeah, quite basic, simple circuit, standard example that you can find in, in many textbooks. Um, not, not some strange, obscure circuit. Okay, so yeah, please, please be aware, don't use ChatGPT when solving mm, such circuits like this and such problems and, and think about the result later on.